Heavenly Father, we are thankful, Father, that in your divine sovereignty that you caused us to be born to serve you. That in our birth, Father, you saw within us salvation to us. And you saw how we would be obedient and convicted to be your children. We are thankful, Father, for this hour that you have given us. And that we pray, Father, that you would hide me behind your, your cross. That these, your people, we hear your words in spite of what I may do or say. Amen. Amen. Call your attention to Psalm 30, verse 5. Psalm 30, verse 5. I want to talk to you with words around this thought, the witness of chosen joy. The witness of chosen joy. The first Sunday of this month, we began a theme for the month after sitting at God's table that he had prepared for us and continues to have before us, that we have a choice or the menu that was taken from Psalms 23, verse 5a. And from that menu, we focused in on joy as one of the fruit of the Spirit, that we have an option to choose. I'm wondering if anyone chose joy this morning. And that joy that we chose is actually one of the characteristics or characters of the Holy Spirit, the fruit of the Spirit, as found in Galatians 5, 22 through 23. We want to continue to stress that we have options. We have it within ourselves to choose at God's table, which he prepares for us daily, of whom we sit at God's table even in the presence of our enemies and the enemies of God. It is God the host who comes to God's table. We are not in charge of that. We are in control of whom we bring as our own secret guests. And many times we bring uh, a guest of bitterness, our own bitterness, which robs us of joy. We sometimes bring within ourselves the spirit of unforgiveness, which robs us of joy. However, in our freedom of choice, God allows us to choose, and we want to choose joy. It is a conscious decision of choosing joy. Thus we come to this verse, as recorded in the New American Standard Bible version of our Bible, and it reads like this, for his anger is but for a moment, his favor is for a lifetime, weeping may last for the night, but a shout of joy comes in the morning. Most of your Bibles read, but joy comes in the morning. Most of your Bibles will, but I like this translation of this verse. And that the translators for the 
New American Standard Bible did not omit the Hebrew word renah, renah, which means a shout of joy. The etymology of renah in the Hebrew is renan, renan. It actually says a crying out or a proclamation of, making public of joy. And that's what we want to take as part of our healing from where we are from 2015 and all of the death that we experienced in 2015 and all of the difficulties that we experienced in 2015. Having this teaching of this particular verse in terms of a shout of joy will help us in 2016. For it is incumbent upon the person that once whatever has happened in parallel to choosing joy, choosing the Lord, we have a responsibility of proclaiming that joy. Thus the shout of joy comes in the morning. Now the psalmist here, David, uh, says weeping may endure or last for a night. A period of time of which we, before we go to bed, most of us will have a reflection on what has happened during the day, or during the month, or during the year. And that reflection may give us a feeling of either sadness, happiness, fulfillment, anxiety. There is a host of feelings that after looking back on the day or the month, that may give us a feeling that pressurizes us into a weeping state. It does not state that David was weeping because of a sin. Could have been. Something that he felt so remorseful for committing against a brother or sister. It does not say that. It does not say that he was carried away into tears because he had failed as being king or failed at being the person God had called him to be, a person after God's own heart. Does not say that he wept because he lost a valuable possession or a loved one. But what it does say and what it does imply that whatever it was that it pressured him, it carried him to a place of weeping. It applies to us today that upon assessing what has gone on the previous hours or the previous days or months or year, that we are compelled to cry. Certainly God is giving us that capacity of release. Tears are good for most occasions. It shows the passion, it shows the feeling, it shows the emotion that God gave all of us. But whatever it is, David said, the weeping that he encountered was a night. A night when others may not be able to see the true feelings coming out of us in the form of tears. During the day, perhaps he had to present or personify a king 
a leader of people. I was so touched when President Obama, when he talked about what was going on there with 22 kids being killed, it brought him to tears. And I believe that no American president has wept publicly when he, or he was addressing the American people. Whatever it is brought David to tears, and those tears fell at night. Have you been there? That during the day, you put on this face, you put on this persona that everything is all right, and perhaps you, you're making it, but in the nighttime, when your tears cannot be seen by anyone else, you can let yourself be relieved of crying. When no one is around to witness how you truly feel. Weeping is part of life. If you have not cried before, you will. It's not a matter of if, you will. Difficulties will come. It's not a matter of if, they will. Unblessedness, difficulties with relationships, will come. It's not a matter of if. You will gain and you will lose. There is a season, there's a day, there's a night for everything. And many of those trials and tribulations will bring us to tears. Here David says, weeping may endure for a night or may last all night. This tells me that he did not get too much sleep. How many of us have spent restless nights thinking about past events, days gone by, failures, disappointments, Wondering where our children are, wondering where our loved ones may be, wondering why this has happened to me or to us or to a loved one. How many of us have spent a restless, long night of weeping? But David here says that a shout of joy comes in the morning. The same God who was God in 2001 is the same God in 2015 is the same God in 2016. The same gods of the day like the day, beautiful outside, is the same God that exists when the tornadoes went through Garland and Raleigh. The same God who spoke was into existence is the same God that allows catastrophes to happen. Same God. Same God. So whatever was ailing David to cause him to cry all night long he comes and says, a shout of joy will come in the morning. God has never left us. He is eternal. And should you choose the eternal God, who is eternal joy, he's always there. Whether you're crying or whether you're not. Whether it's daylight outside or midnight outside. Whether it's joy or whether it's concern. God is always there. Yes. Yes. David realized that if I ascend to heaven, we expect God to be there. Mm -hmm. If I take the wings of the morning and fly to the uttermost parts of the sea, God is there. He also says, and I like this, if I make my bed in hell, 
God is there also. So no matter what the state it is, no matter where we are in life, we have an ability, we have a privilege of choosing joy. Choosing the eternal joy of God. Because joy is not circumstantial. Happiness is. Happiness will tell you, oh, I got the man I want. I, I, I got the woman I want. I got the car I desire. I got the home. Uh, I got a good party going on. I am happy. All hmm? oh, but let troubles come and see where happiness goes. Hmm? Because happiness is temporary. Joy is eternal. And we have an option of choosing the eternal versus the temporary. And we also, from there, have an obligation to tell or to proclaim that joy. God has called us to be witnesses. That is not a suggestion. You shall be my witnesses in Jerusalem, in Judea, in Samaria, and in all parts of the world. That is a commandment. That is not if I feel like it. That is not if everything is going good for me. It is not just when you have hit the lottery. I'm sorry you all didn't hit that one. That, <laughs> five, <baby. laughs> that certainly would have made us happy here, wouldn't it? But would it be a part of joy? Because riches are fleeting. Good times are fleeting. But joy is eternal. And we have an opportunity each and every day before God's table to choose joy. And once we choose that joy, we are obligated to give a shout yes. of what that joy has done for us. To be a witness so others will see God through us. I know you're sad. I know you're disappointed. I know you're hurting. But when you choose joy, mm. Mm, there's something about choosing joy. The world didn't give it to you. The world can't take it away. When you choose, when you consciously choose joy, and then shout it out, that word shout, is that you can't keep it to yourself. You got to tell somebody else. You shout it out and you make known the joy of the God, that God has given me another day. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That his faithfulness Every day is new every morning. His mercy is new every morning. Every day starts up with God's faithfulness of having us here for a reason, for a purpose. And if you have chosen joy, then you have an obligation to shout it out, to tell somebody at school that God is a good God, to tell somebody at work that God is awesome. To tell somebody in the grocery store that he is almighty. Yes. Hmm? We should shout it out when we choose joy. You can tell the story, your own testimony of how he has brought you through 2015. That he has brought you through trials and tribulations. He brought you through rough places. He brought you through the times that you even wanted to take your life. You thought you couldn't go on. He brought you another day. Yeah. Hmm? Hmm? That you can shout it out this morning and tell somebody that my God is good. Yeah. You can tell somebody that my God is joy. You can tell somebody that he has given me another opportunity to shout out his love, to shout out praises to him. Yeah. I know Every day can't be like I want it. I know some things has happened that has caused us all pain. But what I do know 
that we are still here. Yeah. And this morning, not by the alarm clock, not by the television or the blaring radio, but it was by the hand of God that we are still here. Hmm? You may have cried all night last night, but you're here. And if you're here, we have an obligation to shout it out. To shout it out because you have chosen joy. Now, if you have not chosen joy, then you are missing out. You are. Because God says, I am here all the time. God says, if I woke you up, I'm here. And that is worth shouting about. If you choose not, if you don't think you have a capacity to choose, and you choose other than God, then brother and sister, I admonish you, choose joy. My heart is heavy, but I choose joy. I'm lost, but I choose joy. I'm weak, but I choose joy. I've had mishap after mishap, but I choose joy. They may talk about me, but I choose joy. They may stone me, but I choose joy. I may not have clothes on my back, but I choose joy. I may not have a book top, but I choose joy. Yeah, 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 yeah. And when I choose joy, I got to tell somebody. Yeah. How many people have you told today or yesterday that you've chosen joy? That there is something about God that you just can't keep to yourself? How many people have you showed or demonstrated to that God is good all the time? Yeah. And all the time that God is good, that he is a way maker, that he is a doctor, that he is a lawyer, that he is the bright and morning star? How many people have you shared that with? Yeah. Hmm? We have to shout it out as Christians. We have to be the witnesses that he is calling us to be. That no matter whether you are in a jail cell, or whether you are on top of the mountain, or whether you are on the... Highway 5, it doesn't matter where you are, that you show and shout it out that God is God and He's just an awesome God. He has given me joy. Yes. Hmm? Hmm? If you find yourself where there's nobody around, you say, I ain't got nobody to share the shout that I have. I shouted out yesterday, but my neighbors told me I was waking them up. Huh? 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 What, what, what about that? If I'm all by myself, then David, in his 100, in 103, Psalms 103 tells us, you just tell yourself. You just say, bless the Lord. Oh, my soul. And all that is with me. And we will not forget yes. his blessings. Oh, he has cured me of all my iniquities. And he has cured by all of my disease. Huh? He has delivered me from the pit. Yes, he has. He has given me a good year that my strength is renewed like the eagles. You just tell yourself, sometimes you got to shout to yourself. Sometimes you just got to walk through your home or wherever you may be and say, my God is awesome. My God lives. My God helps me. My God feeds me. My God, thank you. Thank you, God. You just tell that to yourself. But you got to shout it out. You got to shout it out. You got to be a witness for us. You're witnessing for him. Let the dog hear you say Hallelujah. Let the cat hear you say, glory to God. Uh, let the birds go out there. You go, you're not going to out-praise God. Birds from singing, here it is. I love you, Lord. You're yes. good, God. Hmm? Hmm? Shout it out. Live life with a shout, with a proclamation that God is God. That God brings you joy. That God gives you something that passes all understanding. You won't know how you made it. You won't. No. Mm -hmm. He will give you that something. That joy that the world didn't give and the world can't take away. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Are you a witness for your chosen joy? 
Did you choose joy this morning? Are you going to choose him tomorrow? Are you going to let circumstances dictate to you how you're going to feel? Or are you going to be that of a person who says, my God is my joy. And yes. God is eternal. And I have eternal joy right here. Mm -hmm. Huh? Talk about me if you will. Circumstances come if you will. Low days come if you will. Anxiety come if you will. Heartache come as you will. Leg ache come as you will. Back ache come as you will. I ache come as you will. I got joy. Amen. Tell somebody I got joy. Tell them right now. Tell, turn to your neighbor and say, do you have joy? Well, I got joy. You don't have joy. That's your problem. I got joy. Yes, sir. I got joy. I got joy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And when you just start proclaiming it every morning, I'm choosing joy, God, and now I'm going to tell somebody else that you yeah. God, I'm going to tell yeah. somebody that I'm shining yeah. for my God who has brought me from a mighty long way through hellfire to all the high water he has brought me. Yeah. And I got joy. Amen. Amen.